In this video, you will learn how to connect a front-end and back-end with creating this simple blog app using React, Node, and Express. This simple website displays blog posts fetched from the back-end. To keep things simple, instead of using a database, we will work with hard-coded data. By the end of this tutorial, you will understand how to fetch data from a back-end and display it in your front-end. So, let's get into it. So to start the project, just create a empty folder on your desktop and open it inside VS Code. Here I have my empty folder. I'm gonna start off by creating the structure of the project. I will keep things really straightforward. So we are just going to create two folders, one named frontend and another one named backend. First, let's start by creating the frontend, open a terminal. So currently we are inside the simple backend with Express. And we have two folders and I want to create the frontend inside this frontend folder. So we need to change our directory to this folder. And we can do it by using cd. cd means change directory. Since we have only two folders, you can press tab and switch between these folders. We're going to go inside the frontend, hit enter. And as you can see, the current directory changed to frontend. We are going to create the project using Vite. And we are also going to include Tailwind as well. So let's follow these steps. Inside the terminal, let's type down npm create beat at latest. For the project name, we are just going to use a period. And this is going to create the project inside the current folder. Otherwise, it will create another folder inside the frontend folder. And we don't want that. So let's just use a period. I'm gonna select React, JavaScript let's say npm install to install the dependencies this is just going to take a second now to install the tailwind let's copy this line and paste it in the terminal let's copy the second line and paste this one as well this command basically installed tailwind and two other packages post css and auto prefixer as development dependencies and npx command basically created this tailwind config file and initialized Tailwind. Next, let's copy and paste this inside this config file. And finally, inside the default index.css file, we are going to copy and paste this. The file should be inside the source folder. Let's delete all of this and copy and paste it. Before running the project, let's also clean this up a little bit. Delete app.css and assets. Inside the app.jsx file, delete all of these imports. Delete this. And for now, let's return a single div. Let's run the project on the browser using npm run dev to see if everything is working fine. Click on this link. And here we have the project. Before we start to create the backend, let's also finish the design as well. It is going to be pretty simple. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. Let's delete this text and set this div as a background, minimum edge screen. This is going to make this div cover the entire page and let's set the width to 100%, background gray 100. Let's make this a flex container and center the items. Change the flex direction to column and put some gap between the elements inside, which is just going to be a H1 and a unordered list. Let's make this a lot bigger, set the font bold, and text gray 800. So this unordered list is where we are going to display the blog posts that we are going to fetch from the backend. I'm gonna list them as list items. So currently we haven't created the backend yet, so we don't have the data. We are going to leave this empty for now. Let's just simply style it. I'm gonna give it a little background shadow a padding of 5, background white, and space y3. This is going to put some space between the list items. Right now, this is how it looks. Because this container is empty, it looks like this. Now that we have created the front end, we can close all of this stuff. And we're gonna go into the back end. Inside my terminal, I will leave this one running and click on plus to create another terminal. So just like we did before, Using cd, 
we are going to change our directory into the backend and right now we are inside the backend we're gonna type npm in it to initialize npm it is going to ask you a couple of questions just press enter to skip all of these and inside the backend we have this package.json file we have the name of the folder the entry point of the project which is going to be an index.js file we are going to change this to server.js and inside this backend folder let's create the server.js file so as i mentioned at the beginning of the video to create the backend we're going to use express express is basically a framework built on top of node just like React, React is a framework built on top of JavaScript and it basically has its own features like components, hooks and virtual DOM. Just like that, Express has its own features as well and it simplifies everything that you can do with Node just in a more easy to understand syntax. It makes it so much easier to fetch data, send requests and create APIs. So inside the terminal, let's type down npm install express and we also gonna need something called course I will explain what this is in a second now that we have installed these packages we need to import them inside this JavaScript file before we do that we're gonna do a little change inside our package.json we are going to add a type which is going to be module this is basically going to change the importing syntax from require to just import we do this to prevent any bugs that can happen. Now let's import express from express and import course from course. To initialize express, let's create a variable named app and set it to express. Express has many methods that you can use. One of these methods is called listen. This is basically going to run the server and we're going to run the server on the app. So app.listen, it is going to take two arguments. The first one is going to be the port that the server is going to listen. Let's say 8080. And the second one is basically going to be a function. And it is going to decide what happens when the server is running. So let's just console log server started on port 8080. So creating and running a server is this simple in Express and we can check if this is working fine by saying node server.js and as you can see server started on port 8080. This means Express is listening this port successfully. Now we can stop this and let's add course as well. Course is basically a bridge between the front end and back end. I will show you why we use course. So this is our front end and as you can see it's running on the port 5174 and the back end I will run this one more time and the back end is running on port 8080. The reason why we need course is basically make this back end accept requests coming from the front end because the ports are different. Let's stop the server once more and create a variable named course options. It is going to be an object and it is going to have a origin we're going to set this origin to the link of our front end so let's copy this and paste it here so as i mentioned at the beginning of the video we're going to have some hard-coded data here and we're going to fetch this data inside react and display it on the front end since the front end and back end has different ports we needed course as a bridge to be able to send requests from this port to this port to be able to use this we are just going to simply use app.use and we're going to pass course and course options variable. Now, if we perform a get request from this port to this backend, it is not going to be a problem because course is going to allow the request. Let's move this to the top to prevent any issues. Next, we are going to create a get route by using app.get. It takes two arguments. The first one is the route. We are just going to use a slash. This is the main page, so the default page. So as soon as the website is loaded, we are going to get what's inside this route. The second argument of a get request is a request 
and a response. In this case, we don't have a server that we can do a request to, so request doesn't matter, but we need to type it down anyways. But we're gonna use response to send a response back when the user hits this page, and we can send the response as a JSON, so rest.json, because this is going to be a JSON object. Let's open up a set of curly braces. Inside, we're gonna have the blog posts, so let's name this object blog post. And to save some time, I'm just going to copy and paste all of this information. This is the data that we are going to fetch. You don't have to type all of this down, just type the first or second one. And with this done, we have basically completed the simple backend. Now it's time to fetch this data on the front end and display it. So let's close this file and go back to the front end app.jsx file. Let's change the terminal to where the front end is running. Stop the server for now by hitting Ctrl C. To fetch the data from front end, we're gonna install a library called Axios. npm install Axios. It is basically a HTTP library and it has a very simple syntax for sending requests and fetching data. Let's import Axios at the top. We're also going to need two hooks, so let's import them as well. Use state and use effect. So once we fetch the data, we need an array to store the data, and we're going to manage that array by using use state. And we want to display the data as soon as the web page is loaded, and we're going to do it by using use effect. So inside the app component, let's create a state variable named array and set array. I'm going to set this to use state. And the initial state is going to be an empty array. Once we fetch the data, we're going to put the information coming from the backend inside this array. Next, let's use Axios to fetch the data. I'm going to create a async function named fetch data. Because this is going to be an async function, you got to type async. And we're going to store the response inside this response variable. And we are going to await for Axios. And we're going to get the data from the port that the server is running. And the server is running on port 8080. So let's say HTTP localhost 8080. And after we get the data, we're going to use the setter function setArray to update the array state variable. So setArray. We're going to put the blog posts coming from the response and now we need to decide when this is going to happen and as i mentioned a second ago this is going to happen as soon as the app component is loaded and we can make that happen by using use effect it takes two arguments the first one is going to be the function fetch data and as the second argument we're going to pass a empty array this means execute this function as soon as this app component is loaded and the only thing left is to display the data inside this unordered list let's open a set of curly braces and map over the array so we're gonna pass the blog posts and their index we're gonna display every single one of them as list elements let's pass the index as the key I'm gonna make the background sky 100 padding 4 rounded corners and a small transition inside the list we're going to have two paragraphs the first one is going to display the block title and the second one is going to display the content let's make this one bigger font semi bold and make the text gray 800 Let's make this one smaller with text gray 600. And now let's use the two terminals for front end and back end to run them at the same time to see if everything is working together. Let's use npm run dev to run the front end. Let's go to the other terminal and run node server.js. And the server is started on port 8080. Let's refresh the page to see if we are fetching the data. And there you go. We have the data 
displayed on the front end coming from the back end and it is as simple as this. Before we finish the video, I will do a quick recap in case if you have a hard time to understand anything. First, we have this empty folder and inside the empty folder, we created a simple structure including the back end and front end. Inside the front end, using Vite, we have created the React project. Inside the source folder, we have the app.jsx. Using Axios, we have fetched the data from backend. So this is the localhost port that the server is running. This is also where we have stored our data. Since it's not coming from a server, the data is basically preserved on the backend. And when you use axios.get on this link, we fetch the data inside the server.js file and to be able to fetch the data from this port we used course it basically allows us to send requests from the front end's link and this is the get route that we have created we only display this data once you hit this link on the browser and when you hit this route on your browser we basically sent this json response that includes these blog posts and back in the front end we fetch the data and we put it inside this state variable, which is a array. And we display it inside a unordered list by mapping over it. And that is it. So this is how we can connect your React frontend and Express backend. I hope you guys find it helpful and enjoyed it. Thank you for your time and see you on the next video.